Oh. So this is um, this is winter. Apparently, um, sun comes out and it's all lovely and warm. Uh, it sucks for filming though, but it's lovely to lie down here on the bundles of reed and have my pooch snuggle up to me and give me kisses. Mm. Yes, especially uh, ow after he was eating his own dog poo. But oh well, life's tough. But anyway, here is what I've been up to. Filmed in massively less dappled light. Something I didn't mention in any of the videos I did on thatching with the rush, but there's a very real tendency to not want to push the thatch back enough. Now you can see this angle here is very different to that angle there, and they should be parallel. So before I add any more, all of this needs to be, well, that, that needs to go all the way back to there, pretty much, I think. So I'm really gonna have to, have to do a lot of work moving that all back. That's a bit better, but we've got a bit of a bulge there I'm going to have to push back. Tell you what, this is frustrating. I've tied this and got this formed, I think, three times now, and it keeps on slipping and sliding down. <sighs> okay, well, I think... I think I've got that bit sorted out now better, so I'm gonna try and form this again and then tighten that back down again and hopefully this time it'll stick. Here is a uh, excellent example of why it's important to have even bundle sizes. So we've got a small, well actually I'd probably even say a medium sized bundle there. And then we've got this monster, which I'm gonna try and get some perspective on it. See how much difference in the, in there there is. This is where you can see that having a person on either side would work really, really well. Because I'd be able to have someone working from the other side, the in, down on this side while I was on the roof, passing the, passing the, uh, the rope back to me, or better yet, me passing both of the men's through to them and then them tying on the inside here. Putting this tie in the middle didn't work because I need to reposition the thatch because the bundle sizes are uneven. I need to move reed from here over to here and this is in the way. So I've got to, I've got to pull this out. So, Sarah, tuck us up a couple of bundles. Uh, yep, come on. Hover, hover. I tell you what, I'll chuck you a couple of bundles. Yep. But tomorrow night, when we get back from the sheep and wool show, we need to be able to help continue the way in the Deal. So, grab a bundle. Okay, now, I think the easiest way to throw it is you get it by the small end.
The reason she's laughing is because she's knocked the GoPro on the time lapse again. We had a big fight about that this morning. You didn't have a fight, I just fell out. Well, when she says, I yelled at her a lot. <laughs> Oi! Did I tell you to throw it? Isn't that what I was Had I finished giving you instructions? No, but now I've broken it. You gotta throw it straight up. If you hit me in the face with that, I'm gonna bleed a lot. <laughs> so you've got to be tossing it up here. Oh, you got to be. You said straight up. Yeah, I also said to toss it up, not just kind of at the sideways. Right. Yes. No. The terms of your deal was you'd be as uh, I'd be as helpful to you as you are as helpful to me. Now stop, because you're not being helpful at all. <laughs> I suspect that you're going to try and toss that one up, a bigger one, a heavier one. Actually, that was well done. Now what? Now I've got to get down and fix up the, the <laughs> time lapse on the GoPro that you've mucked up. Alright, I'm going inside. Now. Well, I think it's going well. I've easily got a foot and a half thick of thatch there, so that's pretty, that's pretty thick. And I'm getting it, I'm starting to get it a little more even when each one, each course and each bundle blended in with the others a little better. But, geez, it's a lot, it's a lot harder to get it even than it looks. But I, I think it's going to work. And I think what will happen over time is as the edges that are more exposed will rot a little bit faster and it should even up. Uh, although, you know, maybe not, because maybe when there's the steep bits, then the, the bit below it will get more water, which means that will rot faster, which means the butt above it will not rot as fast, and then the bit below it will be rotting faster, and then it'll sort of eat away faster, so... Mm. It's a skill. It's a skill. And it's one that I have <laughs> a long way from mastering. But the main thing is, will it keep the rain off? And I think it will. And okay, if this might not last the full 30 plus years that you'd expect of a reed, a thatch, but if it lasts half that, I reckon for unskilled labor, that'll be pretty cool. But anyway, I'm running out of light. Uh, next stage will be to do the other side, um, this, this strip on, on the dormer. And that's where I'm gonna have to start um, blending the two together and we'll see how tricky that was. With the rush, it was a bit tricky. I'm hoping it'll be a bit easier with the reed, but that's what I said about laying this stuff. And what I'm really finding is that it's not really so much easier or harder, it's just different. But maybe it is harder because of the expectation that it would be better. Hmm. Don't know. But anyway, hope you've enjoyed. Hope um, I'm providing useful lessons on the, on the run, and I will catch you in the next video. And if you make sure if you're new to the channel and you want to come along with this journey because there's a long, long, long way to go, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so when the next video comes out, you'll know about it. And plus, if anyone's got any pointers, please let us know because I am learning on the fly. But anyway, catch you later.